All right, and welcome to another Death by Bungie shot analysis video. Last week's videos were a continuation of our early crossbow season hunt down in Maryland. Bungie and I had a fantastic trip, as you know, and for the first time ever, we were able to shoot two deer in one sit. That's right, afternoon sit, two deer in the same sit. That was something that I wanted to do for quite a while, never had the opportunity to do it. Quite happy that it turned out as well as it did. In fact, I had two deer within 20 yards of me that were ready to be collected and taken home. So you can't ask for more than that. If you haven't seen those videos already, you should go check them out because this video is going to kind of give away the ending. You know, this video is going to talk about the successes, what I did right, maybe what I didn't do right, what I could have done better, that sort of thing, why I did what I did. Those are the things that are discussed during these shot analysis videos. And I want to do more of these shot analysis videos. They aren't as popular on the YouTube channel, but I still think a lot of people get stuff out of them. There's something to be gotten out of them because it's a, you can always learn from what other people do, what works and what doesn't work, and maybe apply that to your own hunting outings. But in addition to that, I learn something when I go through this stuff because it gives me a chance to sort of relive what I did and reevaluate what I did. So let's start looking at some of the video. We're going to start with the DSLR footage. This is the first set of footage that I showed. It you know, if you watch the video, you'll see the overall area. There are some corn piles uh, set up to bring the deer in. So it, it kind of helps a little bit because you know kind of where your shots are going to be taken. That's not always the case. Bait definitely does not give you a guarantee as to where the deer are going to be. These deer are a little bit cautious. For starters, what we have are four deer. You can see that the one on the left is a little bit smaller body size. The one closest to me that ends up being our shooting victim, so to speak, is a little bit bigger. But I do believe that all four of these are smaller than the deer that I normally target here in Pennsylvania. But I think as you go south in the eastern United States, at least, the deer too, do tend to get a little bit smaller. That's a... Uh, a phenomenon known as Bergman's rule, if you ever, if you want to look that up, basically of any species, the farther you go away from the equator, the larger that the animals within that species become. And the reason for that is simply because they are dealing with weather and cold and all the other stuff. So they tend to pack on more body size. Whereas if you are in a more temperate climate, like down in Florida, for example, uh, the farther south you go, the less useful that body size is. It becomes more of a liability. So they try to shed that size. It's just a natural phenomenon known as Bergman's rule. So these are mature in my sense of the word. These are does that I'm happy to take a shot at. They have the elongated snouts, as you can see. If you look at that, their noses are a little bit longer and they look to be healthy deer. So I'm happy with any of these four. They don't look to be any different other than the one on the left seems to be a little bit smaller in terms of the body size. Now, as you can see, as they're approaching this, we're looking at the DSLR footage. This is mounted on the tree stand to my right, so I am sitting to the left of this camera. The doe that is looking at this is the one that I take the shot at, and you can see right there. Now, she's a little bit nervous about corn pile. She is a little bit nervous about coming in there, and you can see she's got her snout out. She's smelling. She's a little bit nervous about it because she's not quite sure what it is. Though this corn's probably been out there for a week or so, I don't know, but the guide puts that out usually at least a week before the season starts to get the deer familiar with it, to get them coming into the area, visiting the area, get them comfortable. And these deer knew it was there. They had wandered sort of around the area. If you remember from that video, I know that they knew it was there. And eventually they, this one approaches it and gives me the shot opportunity. Some things I like about this, now I'm going to stop it here on this view. You can see one of the problems that I'm having already. One of the issues that I have, and the reason I took the shot when I did, is because the deer on the left is approaching and she's starting to get in the way of my shot. She, for whatever reason, has decided to approach the corn along with the doe that is my target. And I'm afraid that if I shoot through the doe that's my target with a crossbow, you, you're pretty much are guaranteed a pass through on a proper shot. But I don't want to hit that second deer. So I want to get that shot out of the way before she gets there. She's got her head down. She's focused on that pile. They are not alerted to me. They are not smelling me. They're not seeing me. In this particular instance, however, the wind is going the wind swirls in the woods, but the wind is kind of going toward them. They come from my left. They come from up in front of me to my left and they make their way around there. Now I know they didn't smell me because they didn't spend a lot of time worrying about that. They weren't nervous about me. 
and they weren't looking up in the tree stand, nothing like that. There was one instance, I think, where one of the deer was kind of looking at me. There was one instance where she put her nose up. She might have gotten a brief wind of me, but they were not on alert. And that's what I like, deer that are not on alert. She's got her head down when I take this shot. She has her right leg forward a little bit, as you can see. Perfect, because she's opening up that shot on the vitals. And I take the shot. Boom. Now, a couple things that we notice right here. If we stop it, the shot goes a little bit high. As you can see, it's a little bit higher than what I would like. I don't believe that I spined this deer technically. I don't think I hit her spine because I got that pass through. On a true spine shot to me, that usually means that the arrow becomes lodged in the spine and it disables the deer right there on the spot. This one, of course, the deer does not go very far. She's disabled. It's a good thing, really. But I think I did probably clip part of the spinal cord or something like that. One of those blades probably made contact with something that disabled her. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do the processing down there in Maryland. I'm traveling. They have a processor down there. does a wonderful job. Very happy with the results of this so far. And we've eaten some of the deer that we've processed and brought back. But I didn't get a chance to look at the damage to see where I made contact on the inside of the carcass, that sort of thing. And from the field cam footage, this is the second camera angle. It's basically a GoPro I've got hanging in a tree, as you can see, off to the side. And it's a pretty handy little piece of footage. I think I really like this stuff because it gives you that separate camera angle totally from the side. We can see as we watch here how these deer are lined up. And there's the shot. Now, I'm going to go through it real slow here in a real slow motion and back it up. Two deer in the background, the one is nosing in there. You can see I am off to the left here. I'm up in the tree. I'm going to be shooting down on this deer any second now. She's moving through. And if you look from this angle, let's watch. There's the arrow. You can see it, it not, not frozen, but you can see the path of the arrow. So now we're going to look at the Tacticam shot. The deer, this is a little bit closer to my angle of view. And this is why I'm going the roundabout way of getting to the point to show you my angle of view, why I took the shot that I did and why it you know, because you got to sort of put yourself in my shoes where I'm sitting. This, the, the original footage, the DSLR footage is off to my right slightly. It's a foot or two to my right because I'm in a two-man tree stand. It's mounted on the arm of the tree stand. The field cam footage that I just showed you, that's way off to the right. That's 10, 15 yards off to the right, giving a separate angle, a separate camera angle. I love that. I think it's pretty cool really adds to the overall storytelling, right? This is the bungee cam, so to speak. It's the Tacticam mounted on the crossbow itself. It's mounted right on there, right next to me. However, it is an inch or two to the right of the scope. Now, our second deer, she is moving in on that. I do like this angle. It shows you from my perspective why I took this shot. Again, her leg that's to me is forward a little bit. She's opening up her vitals to me to give me a really good shot. Her head is down. She's not looking at me. She's not alert so much. She's a little nervous because she's thinking about this corn, wondering what in the world's going on here. Is it safe? And for that reason, I am getting ready to take the shot. Did she jump the string? That arrow, at the time that that arrow makes contact with her, you can see right here, the arrow's on its way. Here, the arrow's already made contact and you can bet that she's already felt that arrow. That is not an issue here. This shot was just, it was entirely my fault and I just shot a little bit high. Funny though, if you look, the deer in the back at this point have not moved whatsoever. You can see that she's the only one that has ducked down and she's ducking down because the arrow has now made contact with her. The other deer have not changed their position. In fact, you got one deer in the back just looking around. She's not even, wait, wait, did something happen? She's not even caught up yet. And the deer immediately in the back hasn't moved whatsoever yet at all. It's not until she starts running that they, they're going to react to that. Now, the other concern I got when I first got this footage back to the hotel room and looked at it was, man, did I hit that second deer as well. Those arrows are bouncing around, those razor blade, you know, the blades are open and it's the sharp hypodermic point and all that stuff is flopping around there. And it's, even though it's already passed through a deer, it's deflected off the ground, it's still got a little bit of velocity behind it and it still could do a little bit of damage. And you'll see that it goes right to where that third deer up on the top was standing. So it goes sort of where she was standing and goes right by her legs. All of these deer, if you look, run off very happy, except for the deer that I shot, of course. Now it kind of looks like her head is hooked onto the arrow. Like maybe it's passed through the second deer there, through her head, through her jaw, through her nose, and that she's carrying that arrow. But I don't think that's the case because when you think about it, 
what we're looking at here, the Luminoc is already two or three or four feet past that deer. And the Broadhead is on the other end of that. It's 20 inches away from that going the other way. So it's pretty clear that this just seems to be a coincidence that the deer's head's moving in the same direction as that arrow. One thing I will tell you is that I was concerned about that. That's why they took the shot when I did. If I'd waited a second longer, I'd have two deer lined up and I wouldn't be able to take that shot, period. So I wanted to get that shot done before the other deer came in there. The longer these deer are in front of you, the more likely it is they smell you or see you or what have you. But I don't feel like I rushed it. I didn't feel like that at the time. I felt very comfortable. These deer gave me 10 minutes to get set up and get comfortable and get ready for the shot. This was not a momentary thing, a big surprise. They had been circling the area for a little bit of time before before I took the shot. And with her leg forward, I think it was a good shot. I don't like rushing shots. Rushing shots is one of the easiest way to have a problem with crossbow hunting. You don't want to get in a, in a habit of rushing your shots. So avoid that. And you're, and that's, that's really the takeaway here. Don't rush those shots, but be careful about the other deer in the area. You're going to get a pass through with crossbows. So that's just something you got to take into account. In retrospect, there's no harm in waiting. Wait a couple of seconds, see what shakes out. I'd waited 10 minutes already. I probably, looking back, should have waited a little bit longer. Let me know what you think. There's your shot analysis for Maryland deer number two, deer number one of that particular sit. I'm going to do the next one now. I'm going to record the next video, and that should be up tomorrow. I hope you're getting something out of these shot analysis videos. Hope you're enjoying this stuff as much as I am. Leave, leave me any comments. Let me know your thoughts on this stuff. And we will be talking about this stuff more in the very near future. Until that next video comes out, all hail Bungie!